inside the birds is back what's up everybody it's jeff mosher and adam kaplan it is super bowl week on sunday the philadelphia eagles will play the kansas city chiefs in the super bowl everybody's excited about it adam and i are going to be in glendale for a couple of days but we wanted to bring in an expert to help us break this day- game down as we promised in the last podcast we bring back a familiar face former Eagles quarterbacks coach John DiFilippo, one of the coaches on the 2007 Super Bowl team. The only team so far, John, to win a Super Bowl. But at this time next week, perhaps that all changes. Yeah, I hope it does. You know, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard when you're not involved uh, on both sides. I mean, I have a lot of good friends on that Kansas City Chiefs staff, too. And it, you look at it a different way when there's friendships involved when there's an organization that you love that's involved, um, you know, guys on the Eagles building that you, you respect and, and, you know, the Howie Rosemans of the world and, and, and people like that, that you respect a ton and um, like that, that you worked with. And um, it's hard, man. That's why you try to watch the game as objectively as you can. Um, and and you, you try not to take the emotion out of it because I've fortunately – only been on one side of the coin when it comes to the Super Bowl, fortunately winning it. And I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like losing that game. Mm. I, 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 and I understand why, like the, the following year, the losing team of the Super Bowl, sometimes I, I, there's a stat out there that maybe doesn't make the playoffs. If I could, I, I was talking to several of my friends after the game. I was like, the magnitude of the, and the hype go, building up to that game, I couldn't imagine losing it. I mean, all your family and friends are there. It's just such a, I mean, it's the biggest sporting event in the world, you know, maybe minus the world cup from a numbers standpoint. I, I, I don't know, but it's obviously, you know, the biggest sporting event in, you know, United States for sure. And so, um, yeah, I couldn't imagine losing that, losing that game. John leading up to that week before we get into nuts and bolts, but as a guy with family, and I understand players always be asked for tickets. Did you have to get a lot of t- tickets? You have a lot of quests. Like what? What? It, because it's it's you talk about it being the Super Bowl. What was your like? What was your week like after that Viking game in terms of personal stuff? You know, I thought the Eagles did a great job of that. Uh, first off, we won the game obviously at home on Sunday. Uh, Monday afternoon, they had a meeting with um, all the staff, coaching staff, and families. Then the players had theirs. I think the next day. So basically you're allowed 15 tickets. You get two free, right? When I say free, you're still taxed on them. And then you you were, now this was back in 17. It may have changed. I don't know. I'm just telling your viewership what, what it was like in 17. Um, and then you're allowed to purchase up to 13 more. Now there's, there's mm. different places where you can buy tickets. Like you can buy upper deckers or you can buy the lower deckers. And, you know, I was, you know, I, for me personally, um, it wasn't that big of a deal. I had my wife with my mom and dad, and I, I flew into my buddies from one from college and one from uh, growing up. Um, and so I didn't have a ton of ticket requests. Um, you know, the, so my life was pretty simple. My sister, my sister couldn't make it. Uh, my sister lived in Ohio, couldn't make it. My other sister was pregnant at the time, pretty for long, far along in her pregnancy, so she couldn't come. Um, so, but I, there were some guys on our staff that there was some, it was a tough couple of days for them. And, um, you know, it's hard to tell people no when you're in a situation like that where you may never be in again, you know? And, and so I told my parents, like the way I handled it was, I said, I told my parents, like, just get, just get there. I'll take care of everything else. That's the same thing with my buddies. I said, just get there. I'll take care of everything else. They allow you one hotel room in mm. in the uh, team hotel, which for us in Minnesota was the Radisson Blue, um, right connected to the Mall of America. The Patriots had the JW Marriotts. So the way they do it was this: like the Patriots had the nice hotel, we had the nice practice facility. Okay, they had something else that was nice, that was better than ours. But then we got the home team locker room. So they do a good job. The league does a good job of splitting it up. Like we were in the Vikings locker room where the Patriots were in the visiting team's locker room. Uh, they were at the old Vikings facility out in Eden Prairie. 
um, which is kind of a dump. Not kind of a dump. It is a dump. Um, <laughs> um, I was luckily only there for 10 days. Um, but then we had the University of Minnesota facility, and which was state. I mean, the University of Minnesota hadn't even practiced it yet. And, and we had their indoor. And for your viewership that was that was there, they can remember how cold it was that week. I mean, it was cold. Like when, when the people just living there for a short period of time, when the people from Minnesota tell you it's cold, it's cold. Okay. Like, like when they say it's cold out, it's cold. All right. So uh, they were even saying how cold it was that week. So I remember that. Um, yeah. So it was, I thought the league did a great job of, of splitting it up, you know, um, but the tickets thing, you got to get that done as quickly as possible. If you're a player as a coach, you got to get it done. Like, and, 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 you know, because here's the thing, you know, I, and I'm sure you guys want to talk about this later on is I'm going to leave it at that. And, and I'm going to explain to you the game prep weeks. I'm sure you guys have questions prepared and all yeah, those things. And sure. I don't want to jump the gun on your, on your preparation. Well, actually, that, that that's a good segue because I was curious on what you've got two weeks in between the game. What are right. the practices that are at your home uh, complex like compared to the ones when you fly to wherever you go? When is sort of the game plan hatched? When is most of the, the scouting of the opponent done? And, and how do things change from one week to another? So we, I was fortunate that guys like Doug Peterson, Frank Reich, you know, have been to Super Bowls either as coaches or players before, because um, a lot of us on this kind of coaching staff had not been. Okay, I don't think Jim had been, Schwartzy. I don't think he'd been. Maybe he had. I don't know, but anyway, um, and so we treated it as we had a game that following Sunday after the NFC Championship game. We let we landed in Minnesota. I would say ninety five percent of the game plan was done. And because when you get there, it is the gong show of all gong shows. Like in terms of players are worried about they're getting their families in. The hotels can be messed up, flights delayed, um, media obligations. You know, I mean, you guys are part of that whole radio row thing that's at the Super Bowl, right? Players yeah. going through that. There's even as a coach, the amount of media you have is 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 amped up times 10, which you have during the season. I mean, it, even as the quarterback coach, I had something going on every single day media wise. Um, so, you know, that, that, that once you have to have your, your pretty much your plan in by the time you get there, because you're just the focus, you're, you're going to have a hard time. There's a lot going on. This is the best, best, best way to put it. There's a lot going on. And, and um, you know, you got to maximize your meeting time this week. You got to grind this week. This week's got to be like you're playing on Sunday. Hmm. John, on that, right? So you just got done Minnesota. We mm -hmm. talked the last time you were on about the, the, the challenge of Zimmer's defense. You guys were able to do it. You guys got the job done. Then you play Belichick's defense. Matt Patricia was there then. Give us an idea of what it's like to prepare for that game against Belichick's defense. You know, um, I think part of it, Number one is the Patriot mystique. And, and people can say that that's false or, you know, not bravado in football. It's real. I mean, it's real. When, when you see the guys that have had that much success, you know, on the field um, as the Patriots had and Coach Belichick and Tom Brady and all the fellas have the amount of success they've had in that game, you have to look past that. And you have to trust in your plan. You have to trust in your coaches. You have to trust in your teammates. You have to trust in yourself. And so for our guys to go out and beat, not only win that game on that stage, but to beat the team we beat is a credit to our players. It really is. It's a credit to our players. And so there is a piece of that, of that whole Patriot mystique when it comes to that game. And, and, and they've earned it. They, they've, they've, they've earned to have that mystique. And so, um, our guys did a fantastic job. Uh, we knew whenever you play Coach Belichick, you always know he's going to throw something in there that you haven't seen. Uh, it's just going to be, and you got to be ready for it, whether it be, you know, um, case in point, the following year we go there on Sunday Night Football and play them when I'm in Minnesota, and they did they had shown this all season, this walk around, cover zero look, where they're trying to confuse Kirk, and 
and uh, they did a good job with it. Sometimes they brought cover zero, sometimes they dropped eight people out, and we, it was a guess and match the whole game on what they were doing. And they do a good job with that stuff. I mean, they're, they're he's the greatest coach of all time for a reason. He and Coach Saban, he's the best, best NFL coach of all time. He, you know, arguably top five, whatever you want to put him at. Um, so they do a great job. And, uh, you know, it's uh, hard to prepare for because you just got to trust your rules. Because there's going to be some time throughout the game you're going to see a look and you just got to trust your rules. Hmm. Whether you got to throw a side adjust, whether you got to throw a slot hot, whether you got to throw hot, whether you got to change the protection. You got to trust your rules and, um, and, and trust what you see. And so I thought our guys did a great job of that. How do you guys determine? Because I would think that this week with the Chiefs and with the, the Eagles that there might be a – a little bevy of uh, tricks there. How do you determine when's the best time? And, and, you know, do you guys talk about certain situations in a game where you think that it's going to come in handy? Well, the whole Philly Philly thing, no one knew that was coming at that point, except Nick Foles when he asked for it. So <laughs> you know. did you practice it Friday, John? Is that what, was that the story in a ballroom or something? What was the story there? Well, we practiced it a bunch that week. And, oh. and okay. um, <laughs> so we probably practiced it five times that week and we had a ball on the, on the, on the ground, miss exchange. We had, you know, you know, uh, we had balls thrown over the head of Nick. We had a ball worm burner at his feet. And finally, wow. After about the fourth, fifth time of just screwing it up, Frank Reich throws his hands up in the air and goes, that's it. I've seen enough. It will work in the game. <laughs> wow. <He was> right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't run it again after that. We may walk through it like the day before, but Frank was like, oh, that's it. I've seen enough. Well, so, John, yeah. when, when when Nick asked for it, Doug goes, okay, were you – because I know it, it's – you don't you don't have much time to think about it. were you like oh boy let's see how this works like what were your thoughts if you could go back there? I looked over I was in the box I looked over at Press Taylor and just looked at him he and I just kind of looked at each other and we're kind of like whoa here we go <laughs> you know <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. what are you say that man called it yeah so here we go you know and, and oh hey, man you know it's I just kind of looked at, at at press and we kind of looked at each other like whoa you know, like, and, and, all right. And, and John, as you saw it, as you saw it executed, we were like, as soon as, oh, was it Burton who threw the football? You're like, well, he's wide open. Yeah. Like, did you see? I was watching you... Nick the whole time. Okay. Oh. And Nick still, Nick still bust my stones about this. Like, cause all week, like, cause we'd had the plan for like, if you count the off, off week, like we had it in for Minnesota. So that's one week, two weeks with the bye week, three weeks for the game. So we've had it in. And the whole time I'm saying, Nick, just be an actor, man. Be an actor. And, like, we're trying out different things about being an actor. Like, I'm like, like, like throw up your hands. Like, like look around. Like, look to the sidelines. Like, we're trying out, like, different things. I'm like, and so <laughs> Nick says to me during the play, he goes, after, after, the, after the game or a couple days later, he looks at me, he goes, man, he goes, all the time, I think it was you in the back of my brain saying, "Be an actor, be an actor," you know, like. And so, I mean, he did he did a great job executing the play. It was beautiful, man. And, and I was watching Nick the whole time. So I they had a, from what I remember, they had a stand up background where Nick was, and I was like, "Oh no!" I was like, I thought they might follow Nick to the flat, and all of a sudden, I saw them crash down. I'm like, "Oh, there, there, there he goes." So, I have, it's been a while since so I've watched that play. I'm speaking at a coach's clinic tomorrow in Atlanta. I might, I may show that as a red zone special. Oh, oh it gives your high school coach. Yeah, by the way, every team that's copied it, even college football, they have their own version of, but nothing will beat the original. Nothing. No. And I, I'd like to say we were the original. Um, we weren't. The Bears ran it against the Vikings yeah. like two, yeah. two years prior. So yeah. we thank you, Dow Loggins, for showing, you know, showing that play. But uh, yeah. Um, it was it was one of the best plays in NFL history. That's when you'll see replayed after we're all gone. Three of us are gone. That will be replayed. You know, that'd be like, you know, when they show in NFL films, those, you know, uh, Jim Brown running down the sidelines. And, you know, uh, it's an iconic play in the history of the National Football League. 
Oh, no. Jeffy? So, how do you see these two teams matching up, John? The Chiefs and the Eagles. Where, where do you think the advantages are? Who has the best 53? I think the Eagles do. I do. I, I, I think the Eagles do. The thing you can't, and I, 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 you guys, I don't know if you've heard some of the other podcasts I've been on. I, I've been, and I'm not trying to do one of these. I'm not at all. But I've been one of Jalen Hurts' biggest you know, opponents since before the season started. Um, and, and, you know, excited to watch this guy play. Now, did I think he'd be playing at an MVP level this year? No. I mean, who, who could have thought that? But I, I knew the kid was going to take a big jump because he cares and he's confident and he's really good. So when you have those 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 traits, you're going to make a big jump from year one to year two. So I was excited to watch that. Um, I, I just think the Eagles are, are the best team in football. I do from one to 53. Does that mean they'll win the game? No. Because you can't take, I mean, it's going to be Patrick Mahomes' third Super Bowl. So, I mean, you can't you, you can't take that experience away from him. And in my opinion, he's the best player in the world right now. And so, whenever you have the best player in the world on your team, you can elevate other people's play. They have the best tight end in the world. Um, they're good enough up front. You know, the, run, the little running back from Rutgers is playing really good. Um, and check up there. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's playing really good. Um, whenever you can extend plays, I mean, there's be big plays on both teams uh, because both these guys can extend plays. There's going to be a lot of pressure on both second, both these secondaries, a lot of pressure um, to cover and, and plaster down the field. Um, that's going to be a huge part of this game. And um, so I, I think that, Whoever rushes the passer better will win the game. You know, I mean, the way we, we rushed with four and got after, you know, I mean, Tom Brady had like 300 something yards passing at halftime, but we, we made that, we made that one play. That's right. You know, I knew I, we were too good up front, not for somebody to make a play. You know what I mean? And Brandon Graham made a play like um, we were just too good and uh, up front and, the Eagles may even be better up front than we were in 17. Yeah. I mean, or arguably, they, they probably are. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but like I said, I'm not trying to play both sides of the fence here. I think the Eagles have the better roster, but you can never, ever, ever count out a player like Patrick Mahomes. John, when you – and I want to tie both games together. And going back to the the Super Bowl you were coaching in, when you you just talked about Brady threw for five hundred five, by the way, and this was the biggest yardage game in playoff history, one of the biggest in NFL history, might actually be over eleven hundred combined yards. When you're involved in a game like this and you see New England scoring, do you feel like okay, we're going to have to just throw our way to win here? Like, what was it feeling like? We got to keep up with them when you were coaching that. No, process? no, because we were moving it too. If yeah. we weren't moving it, I would say yes. Um, but we were moving it up and down the field on them as well. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, Doug did a really good job of staying patient and, and we still ran it some, um, you know, and, and we were getting effective runs. And so I, I think if, if, you know, you would have seen us get down two, three scores, then yes. But I mean, we were keeping pace right up with, with them. And so there was never any panic on our sidelines that we couldn't score on these guys or, I mean, we knew like we we're, we were just too good on defense, not for, just for them. We were better than them on defense. Our defense was better than theirs, in my opinion. Okay, mm -hmm. they may disagree, but in my opinion, our defense was better. And usually, at some point in the game, the better defense is going to make a play. And so, um, we ended up making one more play than they did on the defense side of the ball. All right, we're going to take guys a second. I'm sorry, we're going to okay. take one second, Adam, okay. to remind our friends about PHLSportsNation.com, enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams. For the fan, by the fan, that is their motto. So let's uh, direct everybody to PHLSportsNation.com on Twitter at PHLSportsNation. Uh, also, we have a, we're going to hear a word from our friends at Sky Motor Cars. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people over the country want to see. Owner Brett Schiller, make sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. 
Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. All right, we are back with former Eagles quarterbacks coach John DiFilippo. Quarterback coach, former NFL coordinator, but obviously won a Super Bowl with the Eagles in 2017. You were saying, Adam. Yeah, I was just going to – let's get back to the New England game at halftime. You guys are up 22-12, to 12, feeling pretty good, I'm sure. And then – we, we know it came out crazy pro fest in the second half, but what do you remember your feeling at halftime? Cause I mean, it, it was kind of surprising guys were up 10 and a lot of people thought Patriots would win that game. What was the feeling if you could recall at halftime, how, how you doing better? Like whenever Tom Brady's on the other side of that, that field from you, there's no letting off the gas, none, zero. So shoot, we almost felt like we were down, to, you know, we were down. You got to keep your pedal on the metal. That was that was our mantra. I kept, you know, I said to Nick, "Hey, you're playing great. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, let's not force the ball. We don't have to. Let's throw it away, um, and and let's keep playing our game. And, and but we're not going to get conservative. I remember having that conversation with him at halftime. We're not going to get conservative here at all. I said we, you know, and, and there's going to be a point in this game where we have their foot on their throat, and we need to we need to put them out of their misery. And so. Um, you know, that was our mantra. And so, and that's, that's the way it has to be in every game. When you have your foot on somebody's throat in the NFL, there comes a play, there comes a play call or a series where you have to put them out of their misery. And so that's as a play caller, you have to have that mindset as a quarterback, you have to have that mindset. And our guys did. So it's been suggested, John, that the, the chiefs, may have to do – they're a predominantly nickel team, sub-package team, and that if they really want to be able to hold the Eagles' offense down, they may have to come out of that and try something that they don't ordinarily do. I know, just talking to many coaches, coaches don't like to switch up from what they ordinarily do, especially in the biggest game of the year. What do you do when you're a coach who can recognize that the other side might have a little bit more of an advantage of you, but you, what got you there is what got you there? I think that you, if you need to try something different, that's fine. But if it's all of a sudden after a series or a series and a half, you're getting gut, you're getting gutted. You got to go back to what got you there. And so um, I think you may see them go base. The Chiefs you may see the Chiefs go base if the Eagles decide to go big because we've seen the Eagles like they've gone big on people so at certain times of this year. They've gone big, and so um, they may try to big boy the Chiefs and say, "Hey, we're we're bigger and stronger than y'all." Um, and you may see the Chiefs throw three, four, four, three on the field. Um, you may you're going to see them blitz. You're, you know when you're usually when you're undersized, you, you blitz a little bit more. You slant the line, you angle the line, you TT, you ET. So you just can't let those guys maul you up front. And so I, but I do think if all of a sudden you see a series where Jalen and the fellows go straight down the field, boom, 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 boom score, boom, 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 boom score, you got to go back to what's got you in the game. So. That's kind of how the coaches look at it usually. John, you have this unique view because you grew up in Philly at Radnor High. So you, mm. you were here when, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, when Andy Reid first came in in 99. And then, obviously, you would become an NFL assistant coach. And you've, you, 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 you've followed Andy. I know some of your friends coach for Andy. What are your thoughts on him, A, as a coach, and B, his offensive scheme and as a play call? As a coach? He's, un he's incredible. He's incredible. I was out there this spring. Um, Matt Nagy, who's the quarterback coach of the Chiefs now, is one of my best friends uh, in coaching. He's one of my best friends in life. Uh, he and I played against each other. We're from Pennsylvania. Uh, he played at Delaware. I played at James Madison. We've known each other a long time. So I went out to visit him for a couple of days and watch their mandatory camp. There's just an – when you watch Coach Reed on the field during practice, there's just an air of – steadiness and confidence and he's not like he's yelling at people it's not it's just he's been there he's done that he's seen it all he's there's just a, a steadiness to the ship if that makes any sense when you when you 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 he doesn't have to say a word and i could have brought my 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 two-year-old daughter out there and said hey honey who's in charge of this of this practice and she would have pointed at Andy Reid. like it's just you don't need to know football to know who's in charge and so there's just an aura and or of confidence and a steadiness when it comes to Coach Reed as a coach, number one. 
as a play caller, I always admire the guys like Nick Saban, uh, Bill Belichick, Andy Reid, guys that are not stuck in their ways, guys that are always looking to evolve, guys that are always changing with the times. I mean, you look at a guy like Nick Saban. I mean, when they he got to Alabama, they're running old school SECI formation. All of a sudden, he understands, hey, I want to get the best receivers in the country to come play for me. That ain't going to work. Okay? That's not going to work. Okay? So you get a guy like Bill Belichick, who's a defensive coach, right? I've seen them against the Minnesota Vikings on Monday Night Football come out and throw 26 straight passes because they're the, the, the – Freaking Vikings were down three guys in the secondary. And then I've seen them come out and throw two passes against the, the, the Bills a couple years ago. They don't care. They don't care how they win the game. All they care about is winning the game. I mean, Coach Reed, when he gets to Philadelphia, he's split back, two back, you know, old school West Coast. Now you see they're throwing the ball over the field and throwing the, you know, verticals and everything's verticals, verticals, verticals. Like he's evolved. He's, he's, the three coaches I've mentioned aren't Neanderthals. Okay. They're not <laughs> Neanderthals. Okay. They, they evolve. Okay. They understand that when you attack an opponent, right, it's not the same each week. All right. If a team is 31st against the, against the run, you're going to run it. If a team has three rookies in the secondary, you're probably going to throw it a little bit more. Okay. That's just the way you attack an opponent. So, I think as you go along here, okay, and I'll, I'm going to throw another guy in there, okay, who I thought did a good job this year. He's not as, he's not as established as those three guys. You got to give Dan Campbell a little bit of credit here. I wasn't sure about him. I mean, they started throwing the ball all over the lot, okay, and he's a run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. He understood that's not what was best for my team. I don't know Dan Campbell. I've never, I've never even met the guy, okay, but I admired him from afar what he allowed Ben Johnson to do this year, and understand that's what gave our team the best chance to win. And so I think you see a lot of these Neanderthal coaches getting pushed aside because that's not the way you win football games in the NFL anymore. It's just not. And people may disagree with me. The established run crowd may disagree with me. And so, you know, um, but that's, that's the truth. I mean, the numbers are behind it. The analytics are behind it. So you can ask any analytics, 32 analytics guys that are head of the analytics in the National Football League, they would tell you the same thing, okay? And so that's just what I believe in. And so I know I get a little bit passionate about that. That's, that's, my, that's my Philadelphia, Italian, East Coast mentality. I, sorry, I get a little <laughs> passionate, you know, about things I really believe in. Right. We accept that okay? here. That's just fine. That's just absolutely okay. great. Okay. Right. So I hope okay. your fan base can, you know. I think they'll relate. We, we, by the way, you know, John, Joe the crowd, there's no such thing as establishing the run. Nothing. Yeah, I know. That's the, the, true because I always ask these coaches what that means, and they don't really have a. <laughs> it's sort of nebulous. No, we had we had Joe Banner on talking about that, and he he was very fair about it. He understands if you want to be eight and eight, nine and seven, there's a, you can run the ball, but if you want to have long term sustained success, you got to come out throwing. The, the numbers back it up to the '60s. There was exceptions in any game, but. That, Absolutely. That was, There's know? exceptions to everything. I mean, when you're playing in six feet of snow, I, I got yeah. it. But, you know, I mean, so case in point, like we we're playing Thursday night. OK, I am in I'm the OC in Minnesota. We're playing the Rams in L.A. OK, we oh. had just got yeah. smoked by the yeah. Buffalo Bills at home. Right? There was an incident that happened at our building that Saturday afternoon, which I'm not going to get into. That's that's chapter 18 of my book. But yeah. um, <laughs> but. But um, the next week, we go out on a short week to L.A., and it's just – it's a track meet back and forth, right? And in the fourth quarter, I call play-action pass, right? And these defensive guys are – like, these defensive players are so – see ball, get ball, see ball, get ball. Like, we hadn't, we hadn't run the ball in probably a quarter, okay? We flash, and here come the linebackers, right downhill, thinking we're going to run at it. And we have a huge completion. So establishing the run has nothing to do with play action pass either. I know, like I said, this is probably going to get out there viral with the established run crowd on the, the established run Twitter page. I'm probably going to be, you know, blocked and all that stuff. But no, you know that. Hang on. You, do you know that that is a mockery? Uh, Evan Silva, who owns it with uh, Adam Levitan, it's actually a mock of the run 
the, the, the ball crowd because they know. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't even know that was a page. I was just making. A yeah, joke. yeah. No, they want to throw the ball. No, they're making fun of okay. the meatheads who want to run the ball at them. Yeah, meatheads. That's a good. I th- I said Neanderthals. There you go. That, that, <laughs> yeah, that's a, I like. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> I I have friends who are coaches in the league. They they and they like these defensive guys, but they they understand the way you win long term is you have to come out throwing. It's just and plus one thing, John. It, it, this is this is where you come in when you've got passing personnel because I know people want and the Eagles have shown the bo- ability to run the ball. They run the ball very well when they decide to run it. But when you've got Dallas got Devontae Smith. AJ Brown, why would you come out running the football? I just I don't see it. Unless unless you think that that's what's going to give you the best chance for success. I mean that you know we were playing the Arizona Cardinals and team, and they were thirty in the league against the run, and we sure. came out and tried to run it, and it worked, and so I stayed with it. And you know they had Patrick Peterson in his prime over there on one side, and he followed around Stephon Diggs, and our game plan was to run it and pick on. I love Benet Ben Wickery. I recruited, I helped recruit him at San Jose State, but, but he's not, he's not Patrick Peterson. So I, we attacked Patrick Peterson um, away from Patrick all day, and I think Adam Thielen had like 14 catches, and oh wow, Stephon had like three. And you know, Diggs he comes in my office and says, you know, on Monday, all, all mad, steam coming out of his ears, and I could have beat him. I, I know, I know you could have. Okay, but why? Why would I try that when I can take the path of least resistance this way? Yeah, there you go. You know what I mean? So, yes. No, but that's – unless they think that that's what's going to give them early success where they think they can, you know, big boy the Chiefs a little bit. You know, I obviously the Eagles coaches have done a fantastic job all year. So, I, whatever they do, I think the fan base should trust them. All right. On that note, before we get you out of here, we're going to pin you down. You already said you think the Eagles have the <laughs> best 53. And uh, I will, even before I ask the question, I just want to let you know that we're, we're excited for your season to begin what, next month or in March. You're the head coach of the New yeah. Orleans Breakers of the USFL. So I just wanted to remind everybody of that. So Johnny D back in the in the coaching profession and now a head coach. So we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Uh, you got to tell us who's going to win the game. Eagles win a tight one. Tight one. It's gonna be a really good game. That. Yeah, it's gonna be a really good game. It, it's it's it's. Whew. I mean, if somebody was holding a gun to your head and said, "Make a prediction," like it, this one's hard. I mean, this one's hard, and I've I've gone with the Eagles all year because I, I think they're really really good. The thing you just worry about is the experience of the Chiefs, the big play guys of the Chiefs, and and the quarterback. And I like I said earlier, I. You're talking to the vice president of the Jalen Hurts fan club right here. Okay. So, you know, um, executive vice president. Okay. So, <laughs> so, all right. You know, so it's just you it's hard. Yeah. Good stuff. John, really appreciate it. We always love having you on. The stories are fantastic. The insight is second to none. So, hey, can I really say one more it. thing before we you leave? Do. In of the, course. Yes. The detail of this game. Yes. Okay. Doug Peterson. Okay. All right. And the strength staff did something I thought was critical in this game. Okay. So Wednesday's practice. Okay. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? Really week matter. of the game. Week of the game. Week of the game. We're in Minnesota. Okay. The halftime is longer in the Super Bowl than it is in the it's 12 minutes Much longer in the regular game. Yeah. Okay. It might be 21 or 22 minutes the halftime, but by the time they get, you know, Brianna and all her stuff off and all that stuff, right? So um, we practiced that, okay? We, we, we practiced a longer halftime. Um, we literally took the guys in the middle of practice, blew the whistle, everyone headed into the locker room at the University of Minnesota, took off their shoulder pads, all right? And we had a whole stretching routine, a whole – if guys wanted food, you know, sports drinks, whatever they wanted, like we had a test run of half of a longer halftime. Hmm. And I thought it was an unbelievable idea by coach Peterson and the strength staff in that when you're in that type of game to eliminate any sort of anxiety is key. 
you know, and the anxiety of a longer halftime, like it, it, it throws guys off. I mean, guys are wired a certain way to, hey, I come in, I do this, 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 and it's time to go again. That NFL halftime's fast. So just a little tidbit for your, for your viewers there. Yeah, that, that's great stuff. The details that you have to think through when you're playing in a game of this magnitude. No doubt about it. Good stuff, John. Really appreciate you hopping on with us again. Cheers, guys. Have a great weekend. Thank you. All right, you too. And a reminder for everybody, Inside the Birds live streams Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from Radio Row in Glendale, Arizona. We're going to have a slew of NFL coaches and people and, and players and everybody to get to talk to. Really looking forward to uh, being out there. So make sure you're following Inside the Birds and all our socials. I want to thank John Filippo and, of course, Adam Kaplan. I'm Jeff Mosher. You've been listening to Inside the Birds. And, of course, we always thank you for flying with us. Inside the bird.